Hey, history detectives, I'm Conrad. I'm an outdoor educator with the New York State Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation at Letchworth State Park, and today I have a history mystery for you. I'm by this big, tall, white tower that a lot of people notice in Letchworth State Park on the main park road. And a lot of people just cruise right on by and don't really know what it is or what it stands for. This is a very popular area of Letchworth State Park, so you might hear cars go by or see some visitors come and go. But even so, this monument sometimes gets overlooked. And using just a couple history clues, we can figure out not only what this monument is, but what the story is behind it first thing that jumps out at me about this huge monument is its location. As with a lot of history clues, location is really, really important. We're at the intersection of the Main Park Road and Trout Pond Road. Main Park Road and Trout Pond Road. You got to drive past this monument to get to the Falls area and the Glen Iris area from the north end of the park. And a lot of cars fly right on by here. And also a lot of hikers, when they're on our gorge trail, most certainly our most popular trail, are walking right on by this monument. Some of them go by and check it out on their way to the falls area from the north. Second thing that a lot of folks notice is the monument's color. It's bright white, almost blinding in the direct sun. And the third thing a lot of folks notice is its shape. So you know, it's kind of wider on the bottom, pointer towards the top. And as you get up towards the top, it pokes in, kind of like a, an old fashioned letter opener. This is what a lot of uh, scholars would call an obelisk. An obelisk, and sometimes that name is used as shorthand for this monument. It's like, oh yeah, I'm in the area of the obelisk. This is the obelisk. So if we put all those clues together, we have a bright white obelisk monument in the area of Main Park Road and Trout Pond Road. This must be the New York Dragoons Memorial. The New York Dragoons and the 136th New York Infantry were military units that were gathered during the American Civil War. And the story goes something like this. In 1862, the Union, the United States Army, launched its first major offensive move against the Confederacy, which was trying to break away from the main United States. And in 1862, the United States Army tried to capture and surround the capital of the Confederacy, Richmond, Virginia. And that effort cost a lot of lives and was unsuccessful. It was a huge failure and a humiliating defeat for the Union Army. So after that, it became clear that the war was going to go on and on and on for a long time. The Confederate Army was quite powerful. So the call went out by uh, messengers and pamphlets and public speakers in public areas. It wasn't anybody making YouTube videos back then. They had to get the word out to call for uh, major recruitment, a, a call for more soldiers to volunteer. And uh, many, many, many soldiers came and answered the call. There were many young men from the towns of Nunday, Portageville, and Warsaw. Warsaw, New York, uh, not too far from here, was a major um, abolitionist hub in western New York. They were very anti-slavery. So uh, a lot of young men showed up to, uh, to join the U.S. Army to help the, the war effort. And it turns out that the U.S. Army was looking for just one unit. They got two units, the 130th Infantry and the 136th Infantry. They organized right in this area, just across the river from here, on the east side of the Genesee River in what is now Nunday, New York. And there was uh, a major camp in that area. You can still see some historical markers in that area today. And once they were all organized, they shipped off by rail to Washington, D.C. There was a, a lot of action that those units saw. A real Civil War buff could make a whole video just about all of the military campaigns and battles they were involved in. Some prominent Union military leaders were born out of those battles and the action that the 130th and 136th saw. And the units were so relevant to the effort to end the war that they were physically present at the courthouse where General Robert E. Lee of the Confederacy formally surrendered and formally ended the American Civil War. And eventually, in 1903, long after the war ended, but while there were still uh, Civil War uh, veterans still living, the monument that we see here was built, but not where it stands today, 
over on the other side where the units actually gathered and practiced and recruited over on what's now known as the parade grounds. And the parade grounds is so named because those military units would parade and organize and uh, gather there. And this monument was built in uh, 1903, but it wasn't really seen by a lot of park visitors. Uh, there started to get some weeds growing on it. So in 1917, there was an effort to move this monument from across the river at the parade grounds to where it stands now, which is right smack in the middle of the park. It's really close to some of our most popular trails and our main park road, so lots and lots of people see it. The monument had to be taken apart across the river and taken here in pieces and then reassembled. And they did a great job because it stands here today as proud as ever. If you really want to put your history detective skills to the test, come try to find the New York Dragoons Monument in Letchworth State Park. And remember where we are, right in between Park Road and Trout Pond Road. Depending which way you come, you might see Maintenance Road first. It's a huge, bright white obelisk, and if you get closer, you can read the inscriptions around the monument. You can learn more than even I've told you today. Thank you so much for joining me for today's History Mystery. If you have any questions about the New York Dragoon Monument, please put a comment in the comment section below the video. Share this video with your friends to put their history detective skills to the test. And as always, like Letcher State Park's Facebook page and follow us on Instagram for more history mysteries.